Hey all, happy autumn 2013. It's time to announce the uh, entries and the winner for the seaplane contest. Uh, I built this one here, um, not eligible for the contest for a number of reasons, not least of which is the fact that I didn't operate it off of water. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, Exocet, which is French for, um, for flying fish, also the name of a popular uh, anti-ship missile. And I'll taxi it around in the pool and show you around a little bit. So the Exocet is built as per the uh, guidelines. It's all uh, Dollar Tree foam board. It's only a 30 inch wingspan. For waterproofing, I use liberal amounts of uh, packing tape, of course, vinyl tape at high wear areas and at the wing tips. Um, used a combination of hot glue and vinyl for the nose, uh, wing tips around the control surfaces, and a little bit of uh, CA glue along the edges. And that surprisingly worked nearly, if not better, as well as the uh, tape. Um, the electronics are pretty well protected up here, although open. Uh, if I was going to make this a frequently used plane, I probably would enclose this cockpit. I would move the ESC up and or put it inside the fuselage. It has a 7-inch airfoil cord, arm and wing of course, with a 2.5-inch aileron. A ridiculously big to hopefully allow for shorter excursions um, to give a good amount of uh, authority. It has twin booms, a triangular and cross section here, which form the booms for the inverted V tail and are also the rear flotation points. So it has the main hull here, so it's technically a flying boat, although a very weird one at that. Uh, and then it has these two floating points here at the rears of the booms. These are, of course, hollow, and they float right in the water. The inverted uh, V uh, is mixed on board with a stabilizer, and these, are, of course, serve as the elevators when deflected upward and downward in tandem, or rudder when uh, deflected alternately like this. And the lower corner of these uh, does dip into the water, so that is my water steering apparatus, just having the lower uh, half inch to three quarter inch of the uh, rudder vaders, as you call them, I guess, dip into the water. Uh, these are sealed up with some depapered foam board at the rear and taped all the way forward and uh, beveled in the front just for a little bit better aerodynamics. This is a uh, two inch uh, fuselage tube, two sections of it, tapered forward and tapered, uh, fared, I guess I should say, in the rear to provide a little bit better uh, airflow to the three bladed prop. And uh, one shortcoming of this plane was I feel that a critical um, component of a successful seaplane to operate off the water is the breadth and length, or let's just say the surface area of the hull or floats. It turned out to be a little too narrow at first, so I added this uh, layer of depapered foam board, which is just essentially a ski. Uh, this is actually mostly submerged when it sits in the water, uh, but it jumps right up on the step. Um, and it has a step here just aft of the uh, center of gravity. And so um, it does skid on the water. It flies really fast. Um, because the wing is undersized. I did fly it, uh, just not operating it off the water. Um, it weighs about uh, 850 grams with a 2200 uh, milliamp hour battery. That's pretty heavy. Um, it's got an orange RX receiver, a 40 amp speed controller on the side right there. And it's an 1100 kV uh, 2836 uh, turnage motor with a three bladed eight by six prop. It's, this is, turns out to be plenty powerful. And I would also speculate that this was the, perhaps the rate limiting factor in a lot of guys' builds as they perhaps didn't have quite enough power to get off the water. Um, but this turned out to be a good motor size for this uh, aircraft weight. Although again, the wing, I would speculate, is a little too small. So when this plane does fly off the water, it's gonna have to haul ass to get off the water and it's gonna land scary fast. So for future seaplanes, a uh, big hull, broad spaced either wing mounted floats or booms and plenty of power for the power plant. So here's the Exocet on the ground. Interestingly, since the step is just rear of the center of gravity, it actually sits on the main hull on dry land with the booms off the ground. Uh, but when it's floated, uh, it sags down. And so all three points contact the water, which keeps it relatively stable. Um, it's got the very large uh, cord ailerons and then the um, rudder vaders back there. That's up, down right and left. And these are more or less right in the prop wash and so it gives pretty affirmative control even without the part of the rudder that dips into the water. The tail booms float down in the water and this is similar to one of the successful entries that you'll see in a moment, the Neptube, uh, which I think embodies a lot of the simplicity and functionality of the experimental airlines uh, design. Um, I just chose to use two booms and a narrow hull and he used a wide hull and a single boom plus some wingtip floats. Um, 
So both are possibly options. This one weighs more, I'm sure. It does dip a wing into the water from time to time. Can sometimes goose that up. And then when it when it's given power, it'll actually get right up on that step pretty quickly. Here's some video of the Exocet flying at my local field, which like most parks in Arizona, does not have a lake. They did operate successfully off the grass, although the takeoffs and landings were pretty fast, as you can imagine, with a wing of this small size. Stay tuned for the actual Experimental Airline Seaplane Contest entries coming right up.